Hello everyone. In this video, I will go over the Blight mechanic. I already made a video a while back, but things have changed and I wanted to use the opportunity to create a new and improved version of the guide. How does the mechanic work? Blight is basically a tower defense map out of Warcraft 3. You start the encounter by building towers and a group of monsters will spawn in their respective lines. You can choose from a variety of towers and upgrade them. After completing the encounter, the purification pump will explode, dropping loots and the portlets from where the monsters came will turn into chests. It should also be noted that quantity and rarity in regular maps do not increase the amount of drops that come from blighted chests. How do oils work and where do I get them from? Oils drop out of oil chests and can be extracted from anointed items by using an oil extractor, but more about the oil extractor later. So oils can be used to anoint big skill passives on an amulet. For example, if I use three teal oils on this amulet, I will get Mystic Bulwark. They can be used to anoint implicts onto rings that improve your towers in blighted slash blighted ravage maps. For example, if I use this ring and I use two teal oils, I get smothering tower effect. Your smothering towers have 25% increased effect. And they are also used to anoint implicts onto blighted slash blighted ravaged maps. So I take a blighted glacier map and three amber oils and I would get 75% reduced cost of building and upgrading towers, 18% increased pack size. We anoint that, and now we have that on our blighted map. Vendor recipe. There's also a vendor recipe that allows you to trade in three oils that have the same tier for one oil of a higher tier. How do oil extractors work? Oil extractors destroy an anointed item to recover one of the oils that was used to apply that anointment. So you can use that on amulets, rings, etc. So for example, this moonstone ring has your empowering towers also grant 20% increased cast speed. As you can see, Awaken PoE tells me that this anointment requires you to use a silver oil and a violet oil and the total value of that would be 48 chaos orbs the total cost of an oil extractor is 11 chaos orbs so in my opinion it would be worth it to use an oil extractor on this ring unfortunately we didn't get lucky but that's how an oil extractor works what atlas passives should you take i would recommend that you take immune response if your character is strong enough light encounters in your maps spawn 50 percent more non-unique monsters light monsters in your maps spawn 100 percent Faster. Next big note that I would recommend that you take is epidemiology. Varieties of items contained in three blighted chests in your maps are lucky. Blighted chests in your maps have 80% more chance to contain blighted maps. Sturdy construction. Blight monsters in your maps take 12% increased damage. Ico pumps in your maps have 100% increased durability. This will make the blight encounter in your map significantly easier. Then I will take distilled fungus. Blight bosses in your maps drop an additional anointed jewelry item. Blight encounters in your maps contain up to one additional blight boss. This will increase your profit margins by a lot since anointed jewelry items will drop, which you can use your oil extractors on to extract silver or even golden oil. So I would highly recommend that you take that. Blight spawn. Blight chests in your maps have it. 10% chance to contain an oil extractor. This is how you get oil extractors. Oils found in your maps have 25% chance to be one tier higher. And optional would be this note. For example, blight map crafting option is always available. 50% reduced cost of the blight map crafting option. I would only take this note if you do not have scarabs at your disposal. Scarabs are much more superior than taking blight on your map device. And this note, Spores of the Wind maps found in your maps have 3% chance to have an area that contains a blight encounter enchant map modifier. This is optional in my opinion as well, since we are already guaranteeing blight through scarabs. Map recommendations. For maximum efficiency, run blight on maps that are fast for your build, but have incredibly enclosed layouts to force as few tendrils as possible. The tighter the map, the better as fewer tendrils will spawn, guaranteeing more blight reward chests. That is what we want. On incredibly tight maps, it is possible to spawn only one tendril from your blight, giving you an absurd amount of blight reward chests. For example, Core is a really good map, Toxic Zero is a really good map, or Waste Pool. Garab and Sexton recommendations. 
I would always recommend that you use a Gilded Blight Scarab. The extra 50% is just a massive increase in the loot that you will get and it will significantly increase your profit margins. For Sextants, I would suggest that you use this Sextant. Oils found in your maps are one tier higher. Cost of building and upgrading Blight Towers in your map is doubled. Okay, let me show you an extra run. I have a tier 13 waste pool map. I will be using a Gilded Blight Scarab and I will be using a Oils Found in your maps are one tier higher Sextant. Exalted orb. So, as you guys could see, this is how an ideal blight encounter should look like. There was only one tendril on the ground, and we got a lot of oils and an, even an oil extractor out of it. Blighted maps and blighted ravaged maps. Blighted maps behave a bit differently. The map itself becomes one giant tower defense map, which can be anointed up to three times. You can also use chisels and use orbs of alchemy on them to increase the rewards that you get, but they cannot be affected by scarabs. This map is already chiseled up, but you can just use a normal orb of alchemy to increase the amount of quantity that drops. But as you can see, maps item quantity modifiers also affect blight chests count at 25% value. The goal in this map is to protect the purification pump for 5 minutes from incoming monster waves. After successfully doing that, the purification pump will explode, drop loot, and again, the portals from where the monsters came will turn into chests that can basically drop nearly everything in the game. Blighted maps also drop a few unique items that are exclusive to Blighted and Blighted Ravaged maps. Let me quickly show you them. These are Owl of the Thermophile, Owl of the Cryophile, Owl of the Sternophile, Breath Stealer, the Stampede, and Spore Guard. Additionally, the following exclusive oils can drop from Oil Reward Chest, Reflective Oil, and Tainted Oil. If the map is corrupted, of course. Blighted Ravaged Maps are similar to regular Blighted Maps, with a couple of differences. They can be obtained by completing tier 13 blighted maps. The map always has a monster level of 85. They can be anointed up to nine times instead of three times, 
Monsters within these maps move faster and have more HP than monsters in regular blighted maps. So if you do not have the damage to melt the monsters in these ravaged maps, I would highly recommend that you just sell them. All right, let me show you guys an actual blighted map run. I have a tier 13 thicket map. As you can see, all the natural inhabitants are gone. You have to simply click over here and now we have to build up our towers as you can see down here there are some signs for example here there's a little flame that means that monsters that come from that line are immune to fire damage so always keep that in mind when you build your towers so let me we can check out the layouts mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so here's a good point it yeah, is a bit annoying the Placement is a bit suboptimal, but it's okay. I'm gonna go for my summoning tower strat. These become basically snipe towers. Go for that. With a couple of those. Um, I'm gonna build a chilling tower over here. These will snipe the minions that come from that line. These minions are immune to these minions over here. I'm gonna build a freeze tower and a flaming tower. So that these guys die. Oh, they already spawned. That's a bit unfortunate, but that's okay. Go for the classic lame plus ice tower. Yeah, that always works pretty well. It's pretty pretty good choke point here, so I'm gonna go for another flame tower. We want more freeze. Um, and here, there's a, this is an empowering tower. This allows you to improve the towers that you have. It's basically just a support tower. Okay, this is working well. This. Build another flame tower over here. Oh, and one thing that nobody tells you, but it, that you should be aware of if you're too far away from your towers they won't deal any damage i know i know it sounds a bit um stupid but that's the case if you're too far away your towers will not deal any damage okay there are a lot of towers that i can build here let's go for the sniper strategy Get a empowering tower over here so that they are more effective. Yeah, this is working well so far. Get a freeze tower over there. As you can see, this is pretty simple. It's pretty simple. Nothing, nothing special is happening yet. We have everything on the control. Uh, I'm going to build a stun. And another stun tower, just in case some of the mobs reach the purification pump. A couple of more sniping towers. Fire tower, probably an ice, fire, snipe. There's also one thing that I can recommend. Just get the towers up, even if they're level 1, because it makes it a lot easier to upgrade them. We'll have an overflow of building materials, let's call it building materials. And it makes it a lot easier if you just have to click upgrade instead of building them. Okay, there are a lot of bosses here. The ice tower. So far it's looking really good. Let's get the towers there. Bam, build towers. Boom, boom, boom. Do not forget to deal damage yourself. Your ranged character, of course. Melee is fine as well, but melee is a bit riskier. Going well so far.
No problem on that front. You can see the, this is all stacking up. At some point you have so much that you cannot even use it. This is going super well. Okay, I, I think uh, I don't need to build any more towers, but why not? I'm sniping towers in. Lots. There you go. Yeah, it's always important to have a healthy mix. Always important to have a healthy mix of towers. If they're freeze immune, I would recommend that you build stun towers. If they're stun immune, I would recommend that you build three towers that always works very well a couple of sniping towers a fire tower empowering towers to support the other towers that's always a good decision that's usually what i do and as you can see it works pretty well i think i could have just stood afk and let my towers do the work and i I think I could have achieved the same result. Hey, there's a bus up there. And we complete it. Encounter, and what we have to do now is just loot. Just loot. Um, there are a lot of drops on the ground, but my filter is uh, relatively high, so... I don't think uh, nothing is dropping. There's some... We get some drops, but my filter is relatively high, so... It doesn't display that much. Alright, that was a blighted map, and this concludes the video. I hope you guys found it informative and I wish you good luck grinding blight. Goodbye.